Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jamie McDonald here again with Mike Baining, and this is episode 21 of Mirrorless Minutes. And uh, things are getting light and <laughs> airy in here, I guess. So, uh, yeah, you know, there's been a big discussion on Facebook on one of the uh, the Olympus pages there. Not an official Olympus page, but a fan page, the uh, uh, OMD Worldwide Shooters page. I mentioned that we'd be discussing the Olympus Air. Mike and I both have been shooting with uh, the Air for several weeks now. I hear a focus lock in the background there. And uh, you hear it? so yeah, just, we've got some experience with it. I thought we'd do, you know, Mike said, hey, let's do a show on the Air. I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. I mentioned it on Facebook, and it is one of the fastest growing conversations I think <laughs> I've ever seen on that page. I think within minutes, we were like in the 30, 40, 50 comment mark. It was just crazy. And it's actually still going. Somebody's commenting now so yeah uh without further ado i guess uh mike and i'll talk about the olympus air so i'll yeah. let you take off you can start off talking however you want about it mike all right well well first i gotta mention the facebook thing i thought we were gonna get a call from zuckerberg because <laughs> we brought down the system and all of a sudden within 10 minutes i think there were 40 comments on there that yeah, was but, crazy yeah so it uh i'm holding a black version here which is a uh, which is pretty sharp I, I like i like that version might be a little bit better uh you know just doing some street shooting you're not as widely wide open and we're i'm waiting for the picture to be taken here just now that i took of the screen so we can put that on the show we'll, <laughs> we'll put that in the facebook post tomorrow yeah there you go <laughs> let people see it um but uh yeah that that's funny but you know what i've had it for a couple weeks uh actually and uh and I think that the biggest thing is this isn't going to replace your EM one. Okay. <laughs> this yep. isn't meant, this isn't meant to replace your EM one. And I think that's real important. And everybody remembers that. Yeah. Um, probably the coolest thing that nobody even realizes though yet is the, uh, this is built on open platform. So now we've got people out there developing apps and just, uh, I just went out there last night and looked, I downloaded two new apps from the, Apple App Store. I can work it through my Apple my Apple Watch. I've got some stuff working through my Apple Watch now, um, and I've got another program. Just literally five minutes before we started the show, I was telling James, I said, hey, "Look, this thing's got all kinds of." I'm looking at it right now, and it's got some different burst modes. This is somebody's app that they designed bracketed shots for HDR moon shots. So you have to hook up Jamie's interesting lens that he has there to do the moon shot. You got silky waterfalls, fireworks shooting, and and this is out on the store right now. It's called Air Recipe. Super um, cool. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that we're going to see with this, and and I think this is you know this is just the beginning. Um, yeah, I, I and but all the neat things are there, and what's probably most neat about it, if you want to say from a gearhead wise, is I can pull out any lens I want <laughs> that yeah. I have in my, and I can. Put on. I've shot with the forty to one fifty on it, and and I'm shooting. You know, like right now, the obviously I've got on the the fourteen to forty two, and uh, and that's nice to have because when you shut it off, it goes away, and you know you don't need to. It's easy to put somewhere, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's just a sharp little camera to do something different with. Right, you know, and I'm glad that you led off mm -hmm. with that statement that this is not. This isn't for you to replace your existing gear with. This is something to complement it. You know, it's along with the whole fact that it's open platform as far as the software end of it is concerned. Um, you know, that just ties into the whole thing about the creativity side of it. So, you know, when I got the air immediately, the first thing I wasn't thinking about, yeah, I'm going to figure out how to put a camera strap on it. I'm going to wear it around my neck and I'm going to use it just like a regular camera. Right. That was the last thing on my mind. The first thing I thought was, hey, there's a, DJI Phantom back there. I need to get this thing attached to that. Mm -hmm. Or like today, I've got a photo that I'll share that I took this, uh, well, it was yesterday, actually. Um, I mounted it on the outside of my car for the commute home. And I know it's probably like a little dangerous to do this, but I have a dash mount mm -hmm. for, my, for my phone, you know. So it was just right there kind of in front of me. But as I was driving, you know, I was just reaching up and just popping photos, you know, here, taking a photo, you know, as I was driving, getting some really cool, like outside the car shots, you know, that I've done it in the past outside the car shots, but I'm hanging in an OMD out the window <laughs> with my arm and I'm driving and I'm trying to like Probably shoot the photo, you know, and it's like, 
it's crazy dangerous that way. This way was, yeah. you know, it's so it's part of the whole creative thing, you know, just do something different with it. Right. You can use it, like you said, street shooting. You could be sitting at, you know, an outdoor cafe. It could just be sitting on the table, maybe not on something like a big gorilla pod, but it could be just resting on the table. Yep. And you could just be watching people walk by and like everybody else, it's outside nowadays. Everybody's got their face buried in a phone. Well, it looks like you're in your phone. You're just taking photos of what's going on around you. Well, and you know, I have so. a, I have a shot to share of that exact moment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I mean, fair. so that's it's That's just outside the box thinking, I think, you know, it's just get people doing things different. And then the same thing, you know, with the app side of things, like you said, so this app that you just got today, something right. completely new, not even, it's not even something that has anything to do with Olympus, particularly somebody yeah. developed something that does like, sounds like yeah. longer exposures for, you know, it said yep. they named it Silky Waterfalls. I guess that would go towards yes. somebody who doesn't know how to make those shots. But there's an it, app it could be, it for you. It could be, you know, and it says it's a real little thing here. I'll read it to you. Shoot the flow of water of the waterfall with slow shutter speeds one second uh, in order to ex express silk. You know, use a tripod. <laughs> it tells you what to use. It Use a tripod. Yep. And if you have one, an NDA filter to the lens. I mean, so it gives you a lot of, uh, you know, little tips at the bottom and how to shoot the moon and, uh, you know, burst shooting and, yeah, I mean it's 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 a neat little app. And in fact, when you open the app, I just noticed this: <laughs> when you open the app and you touch a little camera at the bottom, everything turns on for you. Yeah, the camera and everything. You nice. see, I mean, my camera was off, and as soon as I touch it, everything goes on. So you see, that's the. I think that's the thing. And I did notice somebody put. Um, uh, I can't remember exactly which Facebook post I read it on today, <laughs> but about the possibility of someone building an app where you're firing off a bunch of these firing off. Yeah. Yes. I think that could be real interesting because now you're talking about doing, you know, whether it's 360, maybe not 360 shots, but shots from so many different angles. Well, yeah. Somebody just yeah. posted online the other day. Um, they did, they, it's called bullet time. You know, it's kind of something that the Wachowski brothers developed for the matrix back in the day. Right. You exactly. know, it's that shot yeah. where it freezes and it zooms around it. it. Yeah. You could set up an app. Somebody could develop it. Probably really not too complicated to where you could have 30 or 40 of these things in a semicircle and you just hit one button and it just fires everything off in the sequence that you want it fired off. And, you know, yeah, it's the possibilities are pretty endless with this. You know, it's just creativity and having somebody who can develop. So right. I'll address Mr. Bob Panic directly. I am not a developer, <laughs> so I won't be developing anything. I'll be playing with whatever you develop. Yeah, but, um, yeah it's totally cool. Or uh, fellow trailblazer Alex McClure, he made mm -hmm. a post the other day. I told him that um, somebody that I interact with online uh, in Florida, he is a developer. And uh, as soon as he found out about, you know, the software for it or whatever, he got it and compiled the, uh, it's the Olympus, the project hack software that comes with it. He compiled that and emailed it to me within like minutes to play with. And um, Alex said, hey, have him set up a program that does time, uh, time lapse, but it does ramping. So, you know, you can speed up, you know, the, the shots and then slow them down. So you get like those crazy different, uh, modes of time you know so it speeds up and slows down during your time lapse i mean things like that that right, right now you need something custom to be able to do it it could just be part of part of an app and it could be something that you update via you know the app store i mean there's it's cool there the possibilities are out there for a lot of fun things with it yeah and you can tell i'm not looking a lot because i'm playing with it too at the same time <laughs> <laughs> and again you know it's you know, like I said, it's not, this isn't, you know, your DSLR replacement, your OMD replacement, you know, it's, right. it's an accessory. It's another way to shoot, you know? Right. Um, so I'll tell you what, like, I, I want to share some pictures. Yeah, I agree. I think and that's I, where we got to go. And I think that what I will do is, um, I think when we're done, mm -hmm. I think we'll set up a gallery or a page. We'll do a post over on the Mirrorless Minutes website. And then Mike right. and I will dump all the full res JPEGs over yeah. there because currently I'm running JPEGs. I'm not running it through Olympus Viewer to mm -hmm. mess with the raw file. So everything I'm sharing Same is thing. straight off the camera JPEGs. And I'll yeah. tell you what, um, I'm not sure of the exact processor that's in it because I don't get into like all the crazy little nitty gritty detail specs. But um, the color and the just the, the feel, I, I'm one of those people that I swear – on my life that there's a difference from sensor to sensor as far as color rendering and just the general feel of it. And this reminds me a lot 
of the OMD EM5 Mark II, just the way the colors come out of this. Maybe it's just the JPEG engine that's used in this versus like the, the EM1 or one of the older pens or something. I don't know, but I really like it. So do you mind if I share some photos real quick? You start some and yeah, let's. All right, cool. Because ultimately in my mind, I mean, that's what it comes down to. Is the I thing. agree. So, all right, let me start this image share. All right, so um, the first picture here is from camping. You know, we've been doing a lot of camping this summer, and this was, I think, one of the, I think this was the first weekend that I had had the camera. Um, I had it when we went to Chicago, but I couldn't use it because we weren't supposed to show people yet. <laughs> so I didn't shoot with it there because we were always around people. So when I got back from Chicago, went up north camping, and this was like one of the very first shots I shot with the camera. I just walked down to the river's edge, and this is with the... Uh, it's with the eight millimeter fisheye, I believe. Yes, because uh, I have the horizon in the dead center, so it kind of takes away a lot of the distortion. But mm -hmm. the dynamic range in the shot, I was blown away. This is kind of getting in the evening. The sun is getting low on the horizon. So there was a lot of, um, it was golden hour kind of, a lot of detail in the shadows from what I can see straight from the JPEG, a lot of uh, color tonal range in the sky from the dark blue, you know, down towards light where the sun is starting to come down. Um, floored. I know good glass helps too, you know, so having the eight millimeter on there probably uh, played a little bit of a role in that. Um, the next shot, kind of a weird shot, but I just wanted to show uh, how well this the sensor resolves with the glass that was on it. This was shot with the, um, the 12 to 40 and I was doing a review for a camera strap manufacturer. <clears throat> and so this is just close focused at like 38 millimeters. It was almost the, the very end of the 12 to 40s focal length. And um, it was kind of cool. Like I had it set up on my little Joby Gorilla Pod, and I just held my arm up in front of the camera until I got it, you know, how I wanted it with the light, you know, and just touch the screen, focus, snap the photo, boom, just really quick, really easy to do. Um, and again, just I'm floored with the color that comes out of this thing. Um, this next one. I stage that toads don't climb stuff. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but I just saw this little tiny, tiny, tiny toad. And if you look in the, the right hand side, like, uh, about a third of the way down, there's a mosquito. If you live in Mis Michigan, you know that the oh, mosquitoes geez. are like wicked yes. bad. <laughs> it's the state, it's the state uh, bird. Yeah. Well, this year definitely is. Yeah. But, um, you know, so this was with the seven to 14, just messing around with as many different lenses as I could think to put on the air. And, uh, you know, if you know anything about the new 7 to 14, you can get, like, super close to things and focus. And, again, you know, this is uh, one of our flower gardens at our house and uh, just all the color. I just had to shoot that with this lens, again, just to show the color rendering that comes out of the JPEGs in this camera. Yeah. The next shot, um, not very flattering subject, but this was with the, the four-thirds 90 to 250 f 2.8. I got a lot of uh, interesting comments when people saw the photo of me with that lens attached to the air. Everything from that is the most ridiculous thing I've seen to that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And one person said, you should put a camera on that lens, to which I had to reply, no, the white thing is the camera. So, right. uh, and the one of the reasons I shot with that on there is because I wanted to mess around with the focus speed because, because it is a four-thirds four lens, so it uses phase detect autofocus. Um, and the sensor in this air is not optimized for phase detect. It's contrast detect. So mm -hmm. focusing isn't lightning fast with those lenses. But the other reason I shot with it aside to test, besides testing focus speed, is I wanted to see how well a lens like that resolves on this sensor because that is a lot of glass and it produces a lot of like phenomenal detail. It's like a $5,000 lens. So, I mean, you just kind of know from that alone that it's mm -hmm. a good piece of optics. And I wasn't disappointed at all with uh, the shots that were coming out of that. Um, the next one, a good case use for the air. Uh, I was shooting from a small single engine plane shooting. Uh, there's a concert down here kind of in the, the left half of the frame towards the bottom. Uh, it's called Common Ground. It happens in Lansing, Michigan every year. It's a big music festival. And I was asked if I would uh, shoot the venue from a plane. And I brought that big 90 to 250 with me, which being somebody who's never shot from a small plane, I didn't realize the lens like that doesn't make any sense in a small plane, so it never got used. Mm -hmm. But um, this one was shot with the 14 to 150, 
with the air, which I'll tell you what makes for a super cool way to shoot from a plane because I didn't have to worry about having a camera hanging out the window or anything like that. I actually sat back in the plane and composed with my, uh, with my Galaxy S6 phone. It just made shooting super easy like that. And this is at the 14 millimeter end, so it's pretty zoomed out. That's pretty cool. Is this a parking structure and stuff right there? Is that what that is? Yeah, so... Just looking like, around at how clear <laughs> all the lines came out of there. I mean, I think that's what's important. Look at how clear yeah. the lines are in a parking structure. Yep. So, I mean, you know, the resolution is there. I mean, you know, everybody knows it's the same. It's one of the 16 megapixel sensors that you're going to find in any of your other uh, OMD or pen cameras. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's shrunk down into something that's the size of an adapter. It, it just, I'm still pretty floored by the whole thing. And uh, the last shot, this is this, um, you know, like I said, I had it mounted to the outside of the car with one of those suction mounts. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually had the, the little strap that comes with the air uh, hooked up to an old camera strap and then that was brought inside the car and shut in the car door so in case everything came undone it would at least <laughs> dangle there long enough for me to grab it but um this isn't a high speed shot this is me just probably rolling maybe five or ten miles an hour down the side road um because i was going to shoot the sky because you know me and clouds but mm -hmm. um numerous shots on the drive home it was just super easy to work with that setup um you know, like, like we were saying, it's just kind of one of those things where, I don't know, just find something different to do with it. Something you don't necessarily think you're going to do with, you know, your regular, 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 regular,
as many comments or on the Facebook page you've said the word regular. Um, it stopped on the word when you said regular. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you'll it'll it'll be one of you know what this will be one of those shows we laugh about in about a year. So yeah, definitely. That's that's fine. You know what? This is good. This is this is uh, <clears throat> this is not produced. I must say, I want to say this is not produced by the Olympus Air. No, it's it's recorded. Oh. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> live live studio on, in front of right. the studio audience. Thank God. Yeah. So it's good. You know, and, and we can tell we're live. Right. Uh, so well you you want to go into image share for a minute yeah not yeah so okay long. all right all right let's see and i won't uh i definitely am not going to take all of these because i just have a a few you see are you seeing chicago um let me go back to that screen sorry that's okay yes okay so again everything just like uh you had mentioned it's uh, these are all jpegs out of the camera uh, there's going to be a couple in here that I probably talk about that might crop, um, but outside of that, and this is just uh, you know we didn't. I, I know I wasn't on the last show. We probably didn't give uh, uh, out of Chicago its fair due about you know just a wrap up. I think we'll have to do that sometime. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, because it was it was that wonderful. Boy, things are turning here. Um, but yeah, this is just showing that the light, the light that it captures, and you know, the, like you said, the gradient of the blue and the sky. Um, you know, just a quick shot that really, that was nothing. I had it sitting out on the balcony while I was shooting with my OMD and I said, you know, I'm just going to turn that on. And if I see something and I started to see all this light coming and I said, that's it. And then I went up on that same building on the roof and, uh, this one, I used one of the art filters. I used, uh, the pop art. There's all the same pop or all the same art filters are there. And then you've got the different options within. And uh, I thought this just had a, the clarity uh, with that pop art too, you know, where it makes everything a little bit uh, livelier uh, in there. And just from the rooftop of that one place looking out, this is Lake Michigan back over here. So I had to go pick another one and I went to the, the diorama. Um, this one, that's from the rooftop of that same shot, just turned around uh, the other way. And uh, the lens on that probably was the 12 to 40. Uh, pro lens at the time, but I mean the clarity and stuff uh, Really really cool shot same thing here. Here's just a regular shot uh, With that 12 to 40 coming off the roof and the, the colors that it reproduced just straight out of camera uh, JPEG didn't do anything to it I just I was doing exactly what Jamie was saying he was doing is we just you know We just had these we really weren't sharing with anyone, but we were testing them out trying them out um, I'm going to sit past that one for a second and I wanted to, I'm going to come back. I'll finish with that one. I wanted to show another use of it, um, too. And this is one for, that I think is really sharp. If you notice, I've got the 60 millimeter macro onto it, you know, affixed to the front of it there. And then I, I brought out the full size iPad and boy, composing a macro shot on a full size iPad is another world um you know i just I, I love it i mean you know it's just it's just so uh uh unreal you're looking at it, it's like watching a large screen tv um so this this is a, a very cool use of it um and then here's the the shot with it right there and then uh even in a little bit further and you can see the the buzz or whatever, what we'll call these i'm not a, an expert on flowers but uh, <laughs> you can see see where that goes there. And uh, let me see if I can grab another quick use of it. Here's a sharp use, just a backyard game washers. I don't know if anybody knows this, but this was neat just to sit it down in the grass and walk away. And then I was sitting off to the side here with the phone. And as I was watching these washers come in onto this board, which, which is probably 20 feet between the, the person throwing and, and this board here where it was sitting, I mean, you look at capture that, but we've got a clarity JPEG out of the camera. Uh, Carnival at night, lots lots of colors, lots of gradient in the sky. Um, just a regular shot. This actually is with the 14 to 42. Um, you know, and then here's here's our where no one is seeing it, and I'm just looking at the iPhone. There's your street shot <laughs> right there. Nice. Yeah, that's that's the one, and I just love it because obviously she's looking over at something um but it's not me with the camera it might be me looking at my iphone because that's what i was doing 
but I could actually sit there and look at my iPhone and okay, so here's here's a nice you know uh, street shot, something different that I would like to get. And then obviously with all the private and admit one on each side, I was obviously I'd looked at framing that prior to that shot. Um, another one with the fair. And I, I'll finish with and again, you know the the colors are crazy, especially like that flower, um, crazy colors. But here's one where I fix the. Um, I know my daughter will be mad that I'm talking about her, but I put on the uh, 40 to 150 and tried to shoot a portrait. She didn't realize I was shooting it at the time, but that lens and this camera, I mean, that's sharp. <laughs> you know, that really, I mean, it caught the, you know, the catch light the back of her hair. The sun was coming here. Obviously we don't have any flash or anything. This is just outside at a parade in uh, Northville. And, uh, it just, you know, very sharp color in her eyes. Uh, just really like what, what this thing can do um, for a JPEG. So when this thing starts, you know, producing the raws, should be pretty interesting, I think, to to see where it, to see where it can go. All right. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sure I, I'm going to wait and my daughter will be mad. I'll more than I don't think she watches. <laughs> That's all right. This will be the one episode where she does. So. Yeah. That's right. Why am I on? But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, those are the kind of shots I just had. That's that camera sitting in my lap. Right. I mean, she, she doesn't know it's point. Nobody knows it's pointed. <laughs> yeah. But you get some good, you know, natural shots that way. Um, some of the things I want to talk about besides the raw, it's it's about battery wise about four hundred pictures mm -hmm. is what I was coming around. Maybe three fifty, four hundred. Depends how much video you're doing in there because it does video. Right. That, that obviously takes up your, your card and uh, a little bit more battery. And, and I think, uh, uh, you know, overall, the the size and how easy it is to just throw in the bag, there's right. going to be uses. There's oh, yeah. going to be uses. So, sure. like, um, I'll just address a couple of things that people have talked about. Or, well, I guess first I'll just show a couple mm -hmm. of things. So, for those who are wondering, um, this is the back cover. It opens yeah. up like this. Um, there's a couple of settings for it. So, like, it's got a. Shoot. You still there? I'm here. Wow. Like, the whole Google Plus is like bombing <laughs> out. Did you see that? The whole thing just yeah. shut down and opened yeah, back shut up. off and reopened back up. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that That's was wild. Freaky. Like <laughs> Google just got hacked. So it's, yeah. we still have viewers. So hopefully everybody's That's still good. watching. And it says we're live. We actually added viewers after that. I think All right. we're, we're crashing Google. But um, yeah. so like, so this is supposed to hold the camera. There's a couple of different size settings. There's a little button you push here and you see how that kind of comes up. Uh, it's for a smaller device. This little tray slides out. Um, I have a bit bigger of a phone. So this is the Galaxy S6 Edge which is a pretty mm -hmm. good size phone and I've got a, a thicker case on it and it still holds my phone with no problem. Yep. Um, so I just wanted to show that for those who are wondering how it works. You're obviously not going to put an iPad in that. No, you're not going to put an iPad, but I, I will tell you the, uh, everybody was asking me to, and now that I'm doing it, your six plus, plus fits. Yeah. My six oh, yeah. plus fits. With yeah. And that's the, fatter than my phone. I thought yeah, with the big. case, with the case on it. Yeah. And, and still a little, because it pulls down, it's got a, you know, spring tension, I'd yes. say there's still quarter inch even after that. Yes. Yeah. It holds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's crazy. So, uh, aside from that, um, so the back comes off. All right. And this is definitely a different thing. So right here, there's a little switch for turning on your Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And so where's the memory card go? So there's this little cover that pops off the back here. And this thing, for those who don't know, takes, um, micro SD. Those little tiny, tiny, like super tiny cards that go right. right inside of there. And there's your um your micro USB port as well. So it's kind of hidden down inside of there. And put her back together. That's the whole unit. I've just got the uh the fisheye body cap lens on mine. Um so something else to talk about. Somebody said, you know, well, how is connectivity and this and that? Mm -hmm. And I personally don't have, I have never, I swear, had issues with the OI Share app as far as losing connectivity. Um, I have noticed that if you are at home and 
it seems to me like all of my devices want to connect to my home network and yeah. that's like priority for my phone so if I'm trying to use this at home I actually have to go in and tell it connect to this ignore my home and then I have I have zero problems I can shoot right. all day long I can shoot till the batteries die and I don't lose connectivity I haven't yet and that's not just Android I mean that's iOS too so no issues there so if, um, um, so you know, I'll say something about that too. I found um, because I've had, I would say I might have a couple more issues, and and I don't know if it's because it's iOS or not. But when I went ahead and I turned off notifications mm. while I was shooting, That's that interesting. helped. That that really helped because I'm getting Flickr notifications. I'm getting this right. and this, and well, I don't know if know, it's disrupting it in yeah. any way. But that really that really helped. And I'll tell you one thing like you did there too, though, I know, and not everybody has this, but if you have an old iPhone, yeah, uh, I mean, I've got an old, yeah, it's not even <laughs> old, it's an iPhone 5, it's not yep. that old, but uh, I, I hook that up, and then it's really good, because I don't have anything else hooked exactly. up. Exactly. That's you know, my camera this, one. This iPhone, the only app on it is OI Share, <laughs> right. and the OA Central, but, um, yeah. which, by the way, that is the app that runs this, is called OA Central, so the OI Share that you would use for your OMD, um, is not the same app that controls this. Right. But what you were talking about, connectivity issues, I noticed that, um, I didn't notice, but my thought is that mm -hmm. if there are, this camera is not hard, hardware is not going to be your weakest link ever with this. It's going to be the app. Right. So, you know, if there are any kind of issues with this, this is an open platform project for people to work on. People can custom develop you know uh and work with the connectivity i would think you know that they could i know via software like with things like um like some routers out there some of the older net gears you could actually go in and boost you know the um the the power in the wi-fi right. antennas or whatever and i don't know maybe that's a possibility with um with this you know if people are having issues maybe that's something people can develop for you know um but i know personally i think that if you make sure that your phone, tablet, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, is not trying to phone home or connect to your home network or whatever, or or no network, you know, if you're at Panera or something like that, you know, your device wants to connect to that. So I can yeah. see where you might run into issues with that, but um, I don't seem to have any issues with it. So to answer that oh, question, yeah. I've been pretty solid so far. No disconnects. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you know if if you take that hint, at least from what I found, especially today, I tried it again. Um, with this one and with this note with the notifications and all that are off it just seemed to work a lot better yeah and then and we, you and I still got to dig into the menus because I know there's something in there talking about do you want to do connectivity for speed or for connectivity yep and we have to experiment with that because we actually just sort of discovered that tonight <laughs> yeah you know and so, that and that all goes down to the app is the, mm -hmm. the strong point for this you know and yeah Super yeah, cool. for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what? Uh, so, all right. Well, I, we probably uh, kissed Start. around this course enough, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, I think we we've, we've made the point that it's uh, you know where it's at and and what we're doing. I'm certain you're going to see more shots from me on it. Oh yeah. Uh, just speaking of a, a little thing we've got coming this weekend. Well, this will transition. We've got our first workshop this weekend, um, and uh, and. I will tell you, there's one spot left. If you're still looking to come, you can you can get here. We'll uh, you know got some awesome awesome places to hit in the city and as well as the country. Real excited, but I'm I'm positive I'll have my uh, Olympus Air with me. And, oh yeah, I'll have mine. Uh, be doing something with it there for sure. Yep. But let's talk about some some workshop stuff. What do you got going in August? All right, cool. So August is a busy month for me. Yeah. <laughs> um. I've got uh, just a personal trip that I'm going to do the second week of August with some friends of mine. We're going to go shooting. But the bigger things are um, the weekend of August 22nd, uh, the Camera Mall in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I'll be doing a presentation and photo walk there. Uh, pretty excited about that. Camera Mall is kind of a newer store. The people there are just super awesome. Big Olympus supporters, but you don't have to be an Olympus shooter to come to that. And if you just happen to be in Michigan towards the east side of the state, or if you're willing to drive to Ann Arbor, it'll definitely be a good time. Uh, just follow me on social, you know, and you'll hear more information as it gets closer. But that's uh, Saturday, August 22nd. 
and the following week after that in on the whole other side of the state in Muskegon, Michigan. Um, I'm going to be doing a workshop there at the camera shop of Muskegon. They're actually like a sister shop to the one in Ann Arbor. And this is going to be a macro photography workshop. And I'm totally freaking geeked on this one because I'm going to go over like how I do all of my macro. And it's not just things like, like the tough. I'll be going over using your OMD. I'll be going over using um, off-camera lighting with speed lights. I'll be going over things like um, extension tubes. And once the uh, the presentation in the store is done, we're headed out to a local park. And we're going to put all that stuff into practice, and everybody will come out of there with some wicked cool macro photos. It'll be a good time. These are both like Olympus-sponsored events as well. So um, if you want to get your hands on some Olympus gear, it's definitely – going to be uh the place to go for that because we'll have live drive kits there for you to try out at both events and of course i'll i'll have more gear than i should probably bring to some of these events <laughs> so you can always try my gear as well i'm pretty open about that yeah um, that sounds great that especially the one i know the guys in ann arbor that's fantastic the, yeah yeah I'm geeked about and, that. Yep. and then and then uh then you've done one before didn't you at the same was it the camera <laughs> The camera, the, yep, the, camera the camera shop. Yep. The camera shop. Yep. In Muskegon. I did one last year and that right. was a, a great time up there as well. I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to working with those guys. And I love the West side of the state. It's beautiful. Oh yeah. Um, it's excellent. So it's funny. So I'm doing some stuff here in Michigan, but you're leaving the country. To do yeah, I am. I'm, yeah, mine's, mine's like international. Uh, so that same weekend, we got a busy August uh, 22nd weekend. <laughs> um, uh, again, I'm doing a presentation, uh, actually Olympus sponsored out in uh, Toronto. Um, but I'm also coupling in a uh, street shooting workshop that's uh, that you can actually join. I mean, if you're in Toronto, you can come to the presentation. That, that'll be great. We're going to be in the distillery uh, district, uh, which is a, which is an awesome place for start for street shooting. But uh, and then outside of that, um, I have a workshop that I'm going to be doing with Alana St. Laurent, and we're going to do street shooting uh, all day Saturday uh, while it's still light out. Then, of course, at night I might have something to do. It might be called Life Composite. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'll get involved with that. Um, and what's even uh, sharper with all this is the Olympus, uh, the reps out there, the execs, the sales execs, the, a couple of them lived in Toronto and know all the great places. So we're going to have some great fun in uh, Toronto that night on the 22nd. And then on the 23rd, we're going to be going south uh, down by a, a city called Guelph. And um, what that is is about a three to four acre old, uh, it's not abandoned, but it's it's an old junkyard. Okay, so salvage vehicles, trees that are 40 foot growing out of the vehicles that have been there for 30, 40, 50 years. And uh, that's that's basically going to be, uh, well, it could be any kind of heaven you want. It could be macro heaven. It could be HDR heaven. Uh, whatever way you want, but from a photographer's standpoint, if you're familiar at all with Old Car City in Georgia, um, this is exactly uh, Canada's version of Old Car City. So that's that's the workshop, those two days. But uh, just prior to that, and we'll have a, a, a good talk and a couple camera shops out there in Toronto that I'll be speaking uh, to some of their people about urban photography and um we actually worked in because we talked today. I think we're going to work a piece in about the air, actually, cool. what, how we how we can use uh, the air in some urban photography. So real excited about that. Sweet. And uh, we need someone. We need the developers listening to come up with some kind of um, live composite deal for this air. You know, <laughs> we gotta I would be with, I would know. be willing to work out something. I don't know. Yeah. We'd have to do something uh, yeah. exciting if somebody would develop a mirrorless minutes app for the air. Yeah. I don't oh, know what that would be. I don't know. You know, I, I don't, you, <laughs> you could put our logo as the watermark, whatever. No, but seriously, uh, I definitely am excited to see what people come up with. And I'm hoping that uh, after this show, a little bit of talk and a little bit of the excitement about it, that people that are capable of developing investigate yeah, it. Definitely. That's de that is for sure. And then um, let's talk about other quick workshops that we got coming up. Um, uh, this weekend we talked about we got one spot on our downtown to small town, small town to downtown, whatever way you want to go with it. And um, on the 15th of August, the week before Toronto, I'll be in Detroit doing a live composite for the whole evening. 
uh, for about five, six hours. I've still got two spots open on that if anybody wants to get in because I've got some new secret places I have not released yet. Sweet. And um, I don't even think we're going to – I have – I have four new secret places that I found. I think we're only going to do two this weekend. Um, so I'm, gonna keep those other two. <laughs> I'm keeping those other two for the next one because they are cool. Awesome. I can't wait to get there. And uh, and Jamie and I know we have to meet and get together, but we uh, sort of plan our, our fall piece here um, because we do have some more ideas coming out for some cool, uh, well, not only workshops, but maybe some big photo walks and stuff like that too yeah. to have fun and try yep. to interact because those are a blast if everybody yeah. can get together. Definitely. So, so yeah. um, I guess before we wrap up, I uh, want to mention that the next show that we do in two weeks, mm -hmm. we're going to have a guest on, uh, Ron Pepper. Uh, he's from San Francisco. We met him out of Chicago. Uh, he does some work for HDR Soft, the makers of Photomatics. Mm -hmm. uh, he does phenomenal, phenomenal uh, panoramic work that just it is literally mind bending. Like he's he did uh, our group photo for the last photo walk that Mike and I did in Chicago. Yeah, we we're at Millennium Park under the the Cloud Gate or the Bean as everybody calls it. Uh, he did a three hundred and sixty degree. No, let let me change that. It is a spherical panorama Whoa. of our group. So it's literally you can pan in every direction and uh, stitch the whole thing together mind-blowing and he does this kind of work like for interiors for really high-end homes and hotels and things like that right. um so it's going to be exciting to talk to him about uh not just his panoramas though but uh his work that he does at hdr soft and his take mm -hmm. on hdr photography because i think that if you see the work that he does you might have a different thought about hdr it's not all about like this acid trip crazy color stuff <laughs> you know he does very very realistic believable photos that would not be achievable with a single exposure so uh right. definitely tune in for that very, yeah very artistic i mean yes. they really they when you talk about capturing the light it's every bit of the light yeah it's it is <laughs> for sure so, cool that'd be great. so any closing words mike anything you got to say or no you know, let's, let's, uh, let's wrap this baby up yeah, let's just uh, hit the airwaves. Okay? Ooh, hey, all right. There. <laughs> it came up quick. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Right. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Give us the thumbs up if you like these. Uh, share it with your friends. Share it with your mom. I know there are a couple of moms that watch now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, his and mine. So, anyways, <laughs> you guys take care, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right. See you, everybody.